preparedness. So in the prevention category, you have sustainable planning and development. So as I said, we have flood maps finalised, and they link up with the planning and development guidelines on flood risk management. So that's basically about avoiding risk in the future. Um, the OPW will continue to maintain our arterial drainage schemes, um, and the local authorities remain have responsibility for their drainage districts. Uh, there are land use management measures, and the minor work scheme will continue to be in place. And then on to preparedness, you're talking about emergency response planning, um, individual community resilience. There's also a government pilot on individual property protection, and um, a scheme will be launched when the plans are finalised on that. Um, there's the work of the Interdepartmental Food Policy uh, Group. Um, that's an interdepartmental group. They're looking at both individual property protection and the, the law, basically, around riparian and owners carrying out maintenance works on channels that run through their land, um, and also data collection. So once you're away from the, the large-scale measures, you're down into the local level, and we have 13 urban areas and one individual risk receptor. There was very low risk in Port McGee. Um, there are new measures proposed in 10 locations, so they're Kenmare, Castle Island, Dingle, Listowel, Athe, Abbey Dorney, Tralee, Banna, Bally Longford, and then Tarba Power Station. There were structural measures identified, but they weren't cost beneficial in two locations, so that's Milltown and Glenfesk, and there was no viable structural measures identified in one, which is Money Cashin. So what's proposed in each of these locations in Kenmare? There is a, a large obstruction at Finnehy Bridge, um, which accounts for a lot of the risks. So it's proposed to remove that restriction and then to construct fluvial and tidal flood defence walls and embankments. In Castle Island, the proposal is for an open channel diversion um, from Angalore Stream around Tullock and fluvial flood defence walls and embankments. In Dingle, the proposal is for a storage on the Dingle Stream and then tidal flood defence walls and embankments. In Lestol, uh, it's flood defences, flood forecasting and warning and maintenance of the existing scheme. In Athea, it's flood defences. Abbey Dorney, flood defences and increased conveyance. Tralee, increased conveyance, flood defences, flood forecasting and warning. And as I said, as I note there, that's subject to review following the uh, event um, earlier this year. Um, in Banna, the proposal is for flood defences. Bally Longford, flood defences. And Tarbor Power Station is monitoring and maintenance of the existing flood defences. So what are the next steps in the plan? Um, so we're at draft stage, and they're due to be finalised at the end of this year. And in, in parallel to that, the OPW will be prioritising the measures that have been identified for each of the locations. So there will be a national prioritisation list drawn up. The final plans will then be submitted to the Minister, DPAR, for approval. And then they'll be submitted to the councils, who may adopt them within three months. So as I said, we've had extensive consultation throughout the CFAM process. That's been at two levels, both at the national CFAM level and, and at the project level. So there's a national steering group, which, which consists of um, interdepartmental groups, a national stakeholder group, which is all your national NGOs, and a national technical coordination group, which are the OBW and all the consultants for the various projects. And then at the project level, we have a steering group, which is director of services level in Kerry County Council, who have been actively engaged in the project. Uh, and a progress group, we have an engineer from Kerry County Council who sat on both groups for the Southwestern CFRAM and the Shannon CFRAM since 2011. And we also have a stakeholder group, which are your NGOs at a local level. So we're now into our formal consultation period. And uh, the, the law governing this is set out in Statutory Instrument 122 and 495. Um, the plans are available in all the local authority offices. They're available online at opw.ie forward slash flood plans. We set out a specific set of consultation questions to guide people on their submissions, but it's a statutory consultation and people can make whatever submission they want to make on, on the plans. We're presenting to each of the councils like this presentation here today. And we've had public consultation days on the plans in Castle Island and Killarney. They're the two for the southwest. We've also had them in Bally Longford, uh, Lestole, and Tralee for the Shannon Sea Brand. Um, they, they were su accepting submissions on the plan from Kerry County Council up until Monday, the 17th of October. And the public consultation period ends Friday, the 23rd of September. So that's quite soon. 
We're also consulting on the uh, environmental assessment, so that's your strategic environmental assessment and, nat your, and your nature impact statement. So on to uh, implementation. As I said, the plans are due to be finalized at the end of this year. There will be a prioritization, uh, prioritize, prioritized national program of measures, and that will also set out the responsibility for implementing and funding those. 430 million euro has been allocated for implementing these schemes. That's from 2016 to 2021, and there'll be a review of the plans um, in 2021. So that's where we are now. Um, we've gone through the PFRA that identified where the most significant risk communities were in the country. We've mapped the risk in those locations. We came up with a range of feasible options, and now we have these set out in the plan. So what happens after that? As I said, there'll be a national program of schemes. A consultant engineer will likely be appointed for each of those schemes to develop those further. There'll have to be a public exhibition stage, um, so schemes are built by the OPW to the Arterial Drainage Act. And we have responsibility to have a further consultation with the public through those powers. And then we'll be into detailed design of schemes like your construction drawings and um, to go out to tender for construction. So again, the plans are available in each local authority offices. They're on the web at opw.ie forward slash flood plans. We have a hotline number, and um, so if a member of the public has a query that they want to make, that, that you know, before they make a submission, if they call that number and during working hours, someone will direct them to an engineer who will be able to answer their query. We accept queries through the email address draftplans at opw.ie and submissions to both that email address and to draft flood plans, consultation, engineering services, OPW, Trim, County Meath. So thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for the presentation, Connor. Um, before we go into the, present, the, the uh, questions by councillors, there's a motion down which I will take, uh, which is motion number 33. And I believe it's in by councillor, councillor um, Maura Healy Ray. So, Maura, if you want to move that, you can title it, if you don't want to. It's fine. Up to yourself. Okay. The reply open. Um, while Maura is getting ready, the next three speakers after that are Councillor Michael Kennelly, Councillor Cahill and Councillor um, Damien Quigg. I didn't realise no, what I was going to do. There you go. Okay, so, um, yeah. okay, so my motion was, okay, I won't have time to read that, but it was following Sea France presentation in various locations in Kerry recently. It is evident that people doing the Sea France study and management of Kerry County Council are not engaging. And why is this? So just take Castle Island, for example. The Sea France proposal costed, is costed at 50 million, and I, of course I welcome that proposal. I'd be delighted to see money like that spent in Castle Island to help with the flooding there. Um, it seems that the Sea France don't know what Kerry County Council are doing as they are proposing to take the water away from Walsh's garage, and that will cross near Castle Island Town and Brosna Cross, meaning a similar structure would have to be built there then with the permission of the landowners. Therefore, according to the Sea Friends study, they are proposing to change the course of the water, making the new culvert redundant. So maybe my question is, why, not that I'm against the culvert being put in, but why there there be another structure that have to be built where, where the change of water is being proposed, and what is going to happen with the new culvert? Um, lying idle, it maybe could be used as a bunker in time of war or something like that. Um, also, along with that, my question would be, what, what is of paramount importance in all of this is that the river is cleared from Craig down past Walsh's garage and the community hall because even with the new culvert, there would be such pressure coming on there that the, the people in Tullig and in the Scart Road will get flooded as well again. Thank you, Councillor. I will indicate it to second that motion, but look, be fair and just to all concerned. The speakers here are listed, so if you want to support the motion thereafter, you can. The first three speakers are Michael Kennelly, followed by Councillor Cahill and Councillor Quigg. Thank you. Yeah, Mayor, uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank Connor as well and Michael Murray as well, obviously, for uh, an update from the CFM. Um, it's just, uh, obviously, I suppose, I mean, I'm going back to the 7th, 11th of September last year where we had a big flooding uh, in, in, in the Listall area. And uh, I've been speaking to Damien on this, but obviously, apart from this, all the Cleaver area, you know, I, I, it was never actually on the CFAM program. 
uh, and uh, you know it, it's you know businesses had to close up their families airlifted out, out, out of the area uh, you know so I'm just I'm just fearful of, of, of areas like this going forward that you know I mean areas now Kerry got flooded that day that when were, were never prone to flooding and that was culverts taken left right and center my van by Lanford you know and, and I think that's one of my fears going forward uh, unfortunately the, the CFAM studies that the houses that are affected in, in these areas, I, I, my, I, my, my, my heart really goes out to them that, you know, going forward, they won't be able to get uh, insurance covered, they won't be able to sell their house, so that, that's a very, very, very unfortunate um, scenario for that families. Um, just come back on the Cleaver area, uh, you might be able to fill me in, Damien, look, it, the money has been allocated and I, I propose that survey to be carried out for the Stoll area and I'm glad it did, but now there's, there, there's um, there's a 508,000 uh, job cost on, on, on this scheme. Um, look, we're just a year and four or five days gone over since that incident and that, and that flooding, serious flooding. Uh, and I just, uh, I mean, I don't know if you can fill me in, and, and hopefully this money can be allocated to whatever program, to uh, our own central funding coming down, or OPW funding, hopefully, and tell us when this can, works can start as soon as possible. Thank you, Cahir. Look, um, I, I, I welcome obviously the CFRAM re report, and um, and I wish to acknowledge all the work that has gone into this, and indeed by our own Damien Ginty as well. Um, it's an enormous amount of work, to be honest. Um, if I could just acknowledge uh, the funding that was provided to Kerry County Council in the beginning of 2014, I suppose, um, after the storm damage there, and and the terrific work that has been carried out in Ross Bay and. Um, Indeed, many other areas, Kells and so on. Um, of course, I, <coughs> I, I welcome the funding and the, the, the work schedule there for all the different towns that were listed, Kimir, Kessline, Dingle, etc. Um, they say after the good news, there's the bad news. But I'm just disappointed that areas that we have spoken about in here a thousand times over, where we had deputations, Raspeck, Cremorne, Inchery, Kalagan, for example, um, you know that they're not listed at all. Like you know, I mean, I've been inside in these houses, some of these homes, and where there's been three foot of water inside, inside them. Um, I've seen businesses destroyed in Lower Bridge Street, Kalagan, um, and you know, going forward, like all these places and that I've just mentioned have been highlighted even on national television, like you know, and. They can't get insurance anymore. Once you're flooded, once that's it, you're in trouble straight off. And then I see all, and I'd like this message to be taken back. These SACs and SPA areas, you, know, you can't even replace um, something that breaks down that was helping alleviate flooding in these areas because of the fact they're in an SAC now and an SPA. Like, I, that's bizarre. I mean, you know. We're forcing families down the road to seriously consider re relocation now, like you know, and that's that's getting very realistic. Thank you. I want to lay the meeting. Yeah, I'd like to concur with uh, what Councillor Cahill has said. Um, it, it, it's um, been known that in the past, like we, and I, I attended the public consultation meeting in Killarney, and. Um, it, it came up where we had um, oyster farmers and people there who were saying that in years gone past they had people who walked the embankments of the river and where there was a break in the embankment it would be fixed um, before it got too bad. But now under the current situation with these European directives we, we can't actually um, do anything about that. And um, there's also no onus of responsibility for the ownership of land embankments in the likes of Inchery and Glacia and places like this. You know, the OPW um, have been down, you know, the minister has been down, there's been three ministers there, and to date um, there, there's no responsibility for this. And we have people paying thousands of pounds um, to try and uh, keep these embankments up. Now, we as a council also would have given planning permission for people to build their homes going back in time in these areas. So there has to be an onus of responsibility somewhere to try and protect these people's homes if, if we in the first instance gave that plan and permission. So I, I would answers um, as Councillor Cahill says because we, we've been back here time and time again and to date there's no answers and no responsibility. Thanks,
Three speakers, uh, Councillor Cronin, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Gleeson. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I want to welcome Connor and, and thank you for, the, for the, the overview of the presentation there this morning. I also want to recognise, I suppose, the tremendous amount of work that Damien Ginty has put into the whole uh, study of the flood plains, the study of the flooding in, in our county, and has always been available to um, at least speak to the people who are affected and, and has done so and has, has outlined the, the situation. Um, an overview, and very quickly, Mayor. Um, I take it, I suppose, from a local perspective. I, I, I highlighted uh, previously uh, during the flooding the, the River Geeston, and this would be in my own catchment area, and all the way from Lestray Bridge, all the way from the Lone over to Lestray and over or towards Ballyhar. Um, roads closed, roads blocked. This has gone on all my life. That didn't today or yesterday. That I know that the scientific information is, is outstanding, and I, I welcome it. But and I'm very disappointed it is not or hasn't been included in this study and has been, uh, we'll say, passed over. That's very disappointing. And you see, we've had deputations in. We had deputations in as a result of the serious flooding into our Kalana Municipal District meeting from Fylde Down into Glenflesk into Ballycashine, where property, homes, uh, businesses totally and completely destroyed. And as has been said, no insurance to get any, any suffer on and the consequences you pay out of your own pocket. And the cruel reality and what the, these people who were born, reared and lived there have maintained to each one of us as elected members. No maintenance, no clearing. The key element, trees blocking bridges, overgrown, silt and sand build up maybe two and three feet in the bed of the river. No one can go in and touch it because of different bodies won't allow you to go next to near it. And in one deputation to was outlined, 1988 was the last time it was cleared, and when the, this would be filed down Glenfess coming in. And there was no real issue for many, many years, and through several bad floods, but tis now the lack of maintenance. And Connor, if you're around, I, I'll give you an example, if we're driving to Killarney or any of your team are, and to give you an, a, a, an example, we don't need any scientists or anything to explain it to you. If you're driving out the Mukras Road, stop and give it at the Fliss Bridge, to the major bridge just a couple of hundred metres outside the town, and look to your right. And in the middle of that bridge, and in the middle of that river, that major river, there is unbelievable amount of trees, rubbish, and, and, and I mean silt and earth and everything has built up that there's a small island there now an island, and that's blocking the flow of the river, and you can re replicate that all the way out. These are basic requirements, and I, don't get me wrong, we welcome all that, but if we don't address the cleaning of bridges, the cleaning out of our river systems, immediately, or as soon as possible, we are going to have families totally destroyed and drowned in their homes again, and it is great, and, and don't get me wrong, flood warnings is massive altogether, and I appreciate that, but a lot of people in these, in these situations, they're well aware of the situation once they see the weather, they know they're going to be facing the same consequences, having everything they own destroyed. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Flynn. Thank you, Cahir. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for your presentation. Um, I suppose Again, I, I would be a bit disappointed that uh, areas like uh, the River Lone in Kilarglen, where that last year there was thousands of acres of land underwater there, um, in Shiri, Gasha, these areas where the houses have been flooded, uh, that, it's, that it's not on the, on the, on the list. Um, just in the, the River Lone, we have a problem there now, where that there's, a, there's an island after building up in the middle of the, the River Lone, and it's causing erosion to the, the, the both sides of the bank because uh, the water, it's diverting the water off the sides and it's causing erosion there. And Councillor Crone there mentioned Lestroy. This is actually backing up all the way from the River Lone, all the way over to Lestroy, uh, through the rivers, and there's roads being closed down there and everything because of this. Now, I called before, and I know a lot of councillors called, for a task force where the OPW, the Inland Fisheries, the, the Wildlife, and the council would come together because I don't know there's much point in doing, doing studies if, we're not, if no one's going to take responsibility for doing the work afterwards. Now, I granted the Inland Fisheries there only last week to try and get permission to dredge the River Lone. Now, she gave me permission to dredge the River Lone, but she said you have to keep the bucket of the machine a foot above the water. I don't know how she intends to dredge in, dredge in a river with a, a bucket of a machine a foot above the water. So I, 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 and again, today we'd call for a task force to be set up between the, the different uh, agencies. Thank you.
Um, I've spent a lot of my life talking about the importance of floodplains. And I know historically that floodplains in this country, and maybe in parts of this county, were abused. And that floodplains were undoubtedly built upon. And in doing so, there was water displacement, which inconvenienced, to put it very mildly, people living upstream or downstream from where those events took place. So there is a degree of responsibility reverting to planning authorities. Maybe they did it with the best of intentions, but it was through lack of knowledge, which they shouldn't have had that lack of knowledge, that some of these <coughs> buildings went on. I, I have consulted every, at every step along the way with the, the engineers, England Flesk and Killarney, Unfortunately, I missed the most recent one because for a different reason. But first question I want to ask, maybe is, is a, a macro question. Is there such a thing as a rise in sea levels? We have heard much about it over recent years. Is that actually occurring at this time? I, I know that, and I, I welcome the recent work by Kerry County Council in the Killarney Electoral Lay where the areas around some of the bridges have been cleared. Uh, I hope they haven't displaced any knotweed and send it down river, and I hope that the earthen banks from which material was cut will not be washed away in the next flood and cause further silting. It is the island which Council Cronin refers is of, of very recent creation because it, it happened to grow on the foundation of a former bridge. So it is nothing historic, traditional or value in that sense in it. And it's time a little bit of common sense prevailed in relation to how it's to be dealt with. And I know I want to ask, in relation to the proposal for the White Bridge, there is going to be water displacement there, and there is going to be a family across the river from where the embankment is to be put. They are going to be inconvenienced. In fact, it is very possible that the entrance to their house will be flooded due to this work, unless... Uh, remedial action is taken to ensure that they are not inconvenienced. The matter, final point, uh, Glen Flesk, I'm deeply concerned about what is to happen in Glen Flesk because there's a vital road there from Baradov to Glen Flesk and if that road is going to be flooded as a consequence of actions taken or actions not taken, an entire community is going to be isolated and suffer not just a local community, but a community in, in transit from Kilgarvin, Kilmare, from anywhere you like, to Rathmore and beyond. So, oh. thank you. Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Connor for his presentation and, and, and Damien for his work uh, to date on it. Um, I'm glad that, uh, that that Kenmare has been treated as a priority. Um, I think it's, uh, the cost should be in the region of 5.4 million and the benefit overall would be 10.6 million. Uh, 146 um, residences uh, should be protected and 81 commercial um, units or premises. Um, I suppose the, the town was badly flooded there in 2008, especially around the square, and uh, again parts of the, the town were flooded uh, a few months ago. Um, I suppose really I'd, I'd like to ask the uh, OPW to factor in a couple of things. Uh, the, the two rivers in question are the Finnehy and Kielnagora stream. Actually, um, there's actually an awful lot of Japanese knotweed on it and I'd hope that that would be factored in the, the proper eradication of it. As well as that, Khmer is uh, a heritage town, a tidy town's winner and a prominent tourist town and I'd hope that the defences, while they're welcome, they would try and blend in with the landscape and try and, uh, you know, not, not take from the, the uh, visual aspect of the town as it is. Yep. And I suppose, look, um, you're saying there that there's a pipe under the, the Finnehy Bridge. That will be removed. That's very much welcome. Um, I'd also like that, though, that you look at the uh, pedestrian bridge going between Bridge Street and the Creamery Car Park. Um, I believe in the, the last major flooding a lot of debris got blocked on that bridge and that was partly uh, the reason for the square getting flooded um, and I think that I think the, the um, you might have to look at maybe um, 
raising the, the, the height of that bridge. Yo, thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you. And I want to welcome the, the, the deputation, I suppose, or the presentation. I suppose I, I'm coming from Dingletown, and uh, I think I sent uh, an email to Barry O'Connor a few times saying how disappointed I was with the level of public consultation for Dingletown. Um, the first public consultation was held last November in the library, and mo a few people came to it, 12 people. Most people didn't know what was going on until he made the presentation in a library in a very quiet place, which was, in my view, totally unsuitable. Um, he had a second pub public consultation then in Killarney in Castle Island. I sent an email. Um, that's 90 miles of a round trip from Dingle. If this is a, such an important project, you should have had the, public the second public consultation in Dingle, as I requested. Unfortunately, I had a letter back saying it wasn't to happen. Now, he made three recommendations to Dingle Town, and uh, I want to put on record that one of the recommendations is to create a man-made lake on the upper end of the town, creating a floodplain in, in a time of a flood. Um, I want to put on record that this has a number of disadvantages. First of all, you're going to create this, land, the, this floodplain on the landfill site. It's above 40 houses. There are 40 houses underneath it, so as if, if anything happened, the, 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 if the gates opened or, or broke, um, a, flood, a flood of water come rushing down and could flood the 40 houses where you're, up on the upper end of the town, plus the streets down along. Um, from the land, landowner's point of view, their lands are going to be frozen now. They're going to be left in limbo. They won't be able to do any development, uh, be it in a, a stated house or anything, for years to come until such time as OPW uh, invest money in this project, if they ever do. Um, like, it's, it's a very, very expensive uh, investment. Look, a few things. I want to welcome Conor and and I've met here in the, the, the public consultation and Damien. And I know that very well that you have a job to do and that you are trying to do it to the best of your ability. But a few things that, that I see wrong with the, the C French study have been highlighted there already. Number one, the town of Kimmy had this pipe that he keep referring to. Anyone that think that was going to sat out all and sundry, one pipe and a bridge, and I know it will be a big benefit and it will ease the flow. <laughs> but the footbridge that was mentioned there earlier, there's a stone wall. When the flood in the river rises to the height uh, that the, the bridge can take no more. Above that, there's a stone wall that is about three, it's 36 inches high. If that was a steel railing even, that the water could flow through, through it, that it is. Even if there was a 12-foot gate placed into it, the water could flow through it, that it is the flooding in the car park and the apartments adjacent to it. Um, down River in Khmer, on any one of the plans, and I've highlighted this before, there's no, there's no plan to do anything or re really relieve the river downstream where it enters the bay and there's elbows of rock and it gets narrow, very narrow in points but yet you're emphasizing that if you take a, a, a pipe up further that will, will increase the, the speed of the flow so I'd ask you again to look at that. As regards Foyle Down that is not included here which is uh, very much alongside myself at home it's not fair or realistic and the, the word you use is that it's not cost benefit at the moment. And I'd like you, I'd like you to think about one thing, the man that was in his deathbed and the water up around the bed it would have been cost benefit to him. And he was taken out by, by um, the army or the Red Cross or someone never again to go back into his home and all that road was flooded. And unfortunately that, that man died for, for whatever reason. But uh, we get an answer from the OPW and with these studies that um, it's not cost benefit, it, it doesn't show maybe 2 to 1 or 1.5 to 1 or something. In an area like that where people have been living with years, families, generations through the years and plan to do so in the future, they should be helped. The last uh, point I'd make is two points. Is the likes of Glasher and Cremon when it transferred from the Land Commission to the OPW. The OPW took over half it, the easiest half that don't hardly flood at all and left the lower half where people are farming intensively and where the houses are, he, don't, he didn't take that in charge at all. And the landowners are left to their own devices. The OPW should, should not be left get away with that. The other last final point is, as, as Councillor Cossey said, land that he've indicated in this, we've no idea what minister or if the government will put money towards this study, even though the study is welcome. But land that's tied up in it now for the likes of development in Dingle, that, um, also, land that never flooded before, 
and but is mapped in year maps, maps that it may potentially flood at some time in the future, one in 50 years or one in 100 years. If we apply for planning permission in that now, for a single house, I'm talking about a family, family, uh, a farming family maybe wanting to build a house in the middle of their farm, they are being refused because on year maps they're saying it may flood one in 100 years. And the question I'm asking myself is, Right, it may flood one in a hundred years, it never flooded in the past. Is that reason enough that they should be refused planning on their farm? No, it may, and if it did flood, and it is very disappointing that it may flood, but what about it if to, if to be the difference of living in their farm for a hundred years and if it do flood, it is very sad, but it hasn't the history of doing so. That is wrong with this study. Vice Councillor Rexfree, Councillor Finucan, Councillor Beasley and Councillor Donald O'Grady. First of all, again, I welcome the representative summit. And, and I think perhaps after the last comments, so people should remember back uh, to the last flooding that took place, particularly in the Midlands, where houses and people in apartments and, uh, were left stranded because of places that had been rezoned for development and left people. And I think we should bear that in mind that people have suffered tremendously from this. I just want to make two points. First of all, uh, in the presence of the OPW here, the, uh, during the last crisis that we had here, there were sort of unseemly discussions or disagreements between demarcation. Who was responsible for what? what is, was it the local authority? Was it the OPW? I think going forward, we want to, a clear identification of who is responsible for what in this county and let there be no e equivocation about it. The second thing, I think that when you see uh, in, in, in the work that's gone, gone on at present in Tralee with her own flood relief scheme, is that, and I proposed and passed this motion, that we as a county council set up a dedicated unit to maintain water courses, to deal with coastal erosion and develop our own expertise. And I think that will have a bearing on the review of our machinery yard, because I believe to, that we need machines to do this, but we need to take responsibility for ourselves in recognising the difficult budget constraints that we have, but I believe that this is crucial. It is not the time when we have an emergency to start talking about these measures. It is when we don't have it, and it should be the work involved should be on, on an ongoing basis. Um, I, I think these are the, the, the key areas, ongoing maintenance work and a dedicated unit of the County Council, and a clear demarcation with, with the OPW of who is responsible for what. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I want to welcome the presentation by uh, Connor and Maureen and, uh, and the, a lot of work that has been put in by Damien down through the last um, 24, 24 months. Um, there are a number of issues in relation to San Key and Belly Longford where a lot of work was done there and has eliminated a lot of the flooding, but there are places in San Key that are still vulnerable. And uh, I would like this to be, to be re-examined, just that area coming out from Belly Longford and in towards Rusheen. But uh, other than that, there has been good work done in Belly Longford. Now, my main disappointment is in relation to Mooney Cashin, where um, it has been stressed on numerous, on numerous times that um, the only way to, to sort out the problem there is to dredge the river from uh, Ballyhorgan down to the mouth of the Cashin and remove a major boulder that's outside as the, as the river were, uh, empties after, after, after full tide into the, into the mouth of the Shannon. That boulder has been explained by older people and wiser men than me to um, officials of uh, the OPW and officials of Kerry County Council. And um, until such time, what happens is that uh, it, the Cashin fills in and if there is um, if there is um, a prevailing wind or a storm with a high tide, that, and then you had, if you have floods before, that the water coming downstream and uh, the, the, the tide coming in, um, they collide and they fire the water out over the, um, over the, the, the barriers in the cashing. And we have asked for the wall to be extended, for the river to be dredged, and until such time as that is dredged, it, uh, that problem is going to continue for the people of the Cashin. Uh, one individual down there, a man of 88, has built a, 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 a large wall to keep out the water, but there are six families that are in danger there. And, until, uh, and I ask 
the OPW to reconsider the situation and have a second look at Mooney Cashin because they have no, there is no insurance for those people. They had insurance the first time they were flooded. They were told it was once, once in 200 years, but it happened twice in the 2014 and 2015. So I'll ask you to go back and have a second look at that. And I know Damien is aware of the situation there. And, uh, the, situ the situation can be, it, it can be sorted, but money will have to be spent to dredge the Cashin River that wasn't dredged since the 1950s, and when it used to be dredged, it did stop that problem. But the problem is there, and the problem will remain until such time as you examine it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, and I'd like to welcome your presentation, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say that our emergency services, they worked extremely hard for our last big, uh, flooding and unfortunately some of them weren't able to get to people that were trapped. That's all straight and fell down. Uh, we were lucky enough, we had the water rescue service, they did a great job. As every engineer we had were out in the night, I'm well aware of that, as our county manager was, they were all, you know, hands on. Now I want to talk about just a few places briefly and I have a couple of photographs I'll show you, I won't be long. I won't, I, I won't belong to them in Ross Road, Glenfless, Fyla Down, Whitefish Mather and Bellicachine. I could go on and look, I think that we're, we're not going to get our fair share of help down here in Kerry and especially Killarney area. I'll just show you, the last thing I'll do, I have two, three photographs here on my phone to show you the way people were flooded. That's all. Thank you, Mel. Huh? We didn't finish? I've seen them before. John Joe, thank you, John Joe. Uh, yeah, I'll be as brief as I can. Um, yeah, I'd be, like has been previously mentioned, Whitebridge and Dunfesk areas would t need serious look at, and I welcome the, 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 or the, the presentation. Um, just, on the, just on the Whitebridge, and I'll just refer to maybe briefly what Councillor Gleeson said about displacement and things, but, and I said this at the, uh, to Conor, I think, in Killarney, that in the past people were taking gra gravel out of river gradually, so what seems to be happening now is nobody's taking responsibility and everything seems to build up, and the islands that have been referred to below Fles Bridge are a perfect example of that, of lack of common sense and no joined up thinking. But in the case of the White Bridge, there's gravel built up now just uh, at the bend of the river, just across from Bowler's Garage, mm -hmm. and it's building up and building up on the left-hand side. And I've said this, and it's kind of obvious to me, if you drop the river, the level of the river, and take that gravel away, well, and if you drop it by half a metre, well, obviously the water level drops half a metre as well. And that's all we're talking about at the end of the day. Okay, you might need to go upstream, or you might need to go downstream. There are no implications for anybody else by doing that. There are none, because the water that's flooding the caravan park and other areas there, that ends up coming straight back into the river again. It just takes, it just diverts itself. So I think that that happened before, and there has to be some stage where water keeps building up. It's happening at the eyes of bridges. I've had it myself in Notches and Motions in Scotland, where there's uh, one eye of the bridge is actually closed. And so that has to have an implication, and there has to be a way of dealing with that on an ongoing basis, not waiting for uh, the last minute and waiting for things to happen. And as Councillor Healy said, there is a human side to this as well. There, there are, and, and he alluded to the man that had to be taken out of his home for the last time in, in, in a boat. And that has to be taken into account. It's not just down to cost benefit analysis. Um, just one or two other things. The First of all, forestry is a huge uh, problem with this, I think, as well. It's a bigger picture. Where land, and I've seen it myself regularly, where water runs now, it runs into drain by the forestry, straight into a stream and straight into the river. There's the, the speed, that, that's one of the reasons why floods are building up so quickly. There's a huge problem with that. But I think the dropping of the rivers is, is a huge thing. And I have just one other thing I will finish on. In, and it's to do with Cast Island, and it's to do with Kilmory, and, and that draining needs to be done there. But that draining, bringing that to Tullig, you're actually bringing it to an area that's flooded already. So why would you bring extra water to an area that cannot cope with the water that is bringing already? And I welcome the culvert that is going to solve a problem without creating any other problems. I welcome that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, thanks very much. And Connor, I want to thank you for your um, presentation. Um, I want to acknowledge the work that is ongoing. I particularly want to acknowledge the contribution that has been made by our own Damien here and the um, phenomenal input that has been made by him in this local authority in advancing our case and um, 
uh, basically keeping us up to date and um, being solution focused. Um, I acknowledge that there's a huge number of areas included in this, um, 300 areas or more, and for example, two specific questions in relation to Banna and Tralee, and you're talking about a flood defence mechanism, and I'd want to know, are you in a position to give us specific detail as to what we're talking about there? And secondly, and significantly, I want to ask that there are areas that were not originally included or are seen to be prone to flooding in the, um, in the original studies, and we, in the Tralee Municipal District area, for example, um, we have written and we have asked for um, these areas that we saw in the last number of months that had severe flooding issues, not originally envisaged as having them. Uh, we've asked for them to be included as part of the study, and I just want to know where they are now, or, or are they included, or where we are going forward. Um, can I also ask just some detail on the national priority list and all of that, uh, and who's drawing up that national priority list, and um, how much funding, do we have any idea how much funding will be needed, and how much funding will be made available uh, going forward, and um, when this process will be completed, when are we ballpark, um, date-wise, talking about you know, it, it moving on to the allocation of funding and the schemes being up and running? Thank you. Constantly important. From Betty Long, I, I know all about flooding, and likewise in Tarbert. Tarbert is, I came from Tarbert, I'm not living in Betty Longford, and I mean I've seen horrific scenes in Betty Longford. And I know that uh, I must thank Kerry County Council and the OPW, and uh, particularly Damien, for, for getting a job done that cost 103000 I think. And I suppose at the time, uh, Simon Harris was also a, a huge help when he came to Betty Longford and met all the people, and uh, so did uh, Charlie O'Sullivan and other members of Kerry County Council. So it was wonderful to get that job done, but that's uh, uh, sort of put an embankment around the village to alleviate the problem. But as on the Listowel side of Bally Longford, nothing was done there. And you have the Bally Line River and two or three little tributaries off it. Now, Damien, I've discussed this with Damien as well, and Damien has been extremely helpful. But if I, all I want to do really is to have the vegetation removed from those because they are causing. The, the, they want the water, they are stopping the water running into, into the other the bigger river, the Valley Line River, and backing into the houses, and it's, it can be still horrific. There's one man that doesn't go to bed when, does, when, when the forecast is bad for Valley Longford, and he's living particularly in, in that state, and I think uh, uh, Damien, mean, you met him in, in, in Valley Longford. So, look, that's all I'm asking you is it's quite a small money, and we have the winter is facing Valley Longford again, and Valley Longford has had with natural news for a number of years. So, if you could address that, that's all I'd ask for. Thanks, Colin. Thank you very much indeed. The next three speakers is Councillor Lord, Councillor McAllister and Councillor Nicolor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I welcome the presentation by O'Connor uh, in relation to uh, the problems that we have, that you have outlined. I support other councillors in the, uh, the way they pointed out the problems with rivers. I have been calling for rivers to be dredged to prevent flooding for years. Uh, I've also called, uh, I think on a few occasions, that the inland fisheries should be here as well with you today in that presenta presentation, so that we could identify who is responsible for what. We are going to various agencies. As I pointed out, we have difficulties with our rivers. The excuse that we get, as Councillor Flynn would say, or uh, they have fisher spawning, we can't do this because of it's an impact here. We are in serious trouble inside in this county because of our rivers being blocked and the responsibility is either the onus on Kerry County Council to go out with a machine and clear those rivers and the inland fisheries turning around saying you cannot do it because of spawning fish. We need, and I say, we need both of you to be in presentation so that you can identify who is the problem and who's got the responsibilities. And until that happens, I'm afraid what's happened here today is going to be null and void because you're going to come back again to us next year and the CFRAM studies will have a different view. Thank you. Thank you, Carheer. Look, I suppose I had an emergency motion on with the flooding in Kilmiley and the graveyard at Kilmiley, Kilmiley South uh, Estate, and also at the graveyard in Kilmiley. So I suppose nothing has been done since that was last December. That's a long time. I think there should be something, you know, a plan for that graveyard in Kilmiley. Uh, I suppose all the graveyard needs to be drained there. The housing estate at Kilmiley South needs to be drained there. And the water has to be taken off the road there. I believe a hydrologist report was done for, for the area. 
and um, mm -hmm. I'd be just looking for a copy of that report to be sent to the councillors and also a copy sent to the local graveyard committee because one of the, the members of the graveyard committee was looking for a copy of that report uh, and to get something done about it as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. I won't keep you too long. Uh, I want to specifically deal with Glyn Flesk and Foyle Down. And um, we've had situations where you, there's other parts, and Councillor Cronin referred to Listry that wasn't included in this plan. Now, what just baffles me completely, you were doing a study in a plan in Glyn Flesk anyway. He uh, did uh, two areas of maps, um, and the Foyle Down was the third area. Why didn't you do it? Because it would have made sense. There is flooding, there was flooding, um, and people and houses were affected. So why just not? We sent a letter to you in January to OPW um, around the time of it, and it took five months to get a response to the, and the same response we got the first time. So I really, now that you're here, I want to know, you know, why didn't you just take that extra step and do the analysis of that area as well? Um, I, I've seen some of the uh, proposals that you have in relation to the flood defence there that's out in consultation. Um, another question, why didn't you go back to Glyn Flesk? Um, you went in the first time, you didn't go back in the second part of the consultation and a bit similar to Councillor Fitzgerald's situation uh, with Dingle. I know Killarney isn't as far away, but you, you, the first consultation there, why didn't you go back? Um, with regards to the trees and along the banks of the river, the OPW did this work back in the 80s. Why, in the name of God, can you not just go back and do it again? Because it solves problems. It's been seen to solve the problem since since it was done back then, and it would be a real benefit and ease to the people living out inside in that area. You're proposing, and part of it, to, to raise the main road. There's a big question as to what the effects of that is going to be on the file mm. downside of that main road uh, when it comes down to it. They're very, very simple questions, but really we're not getting any answers to it. Thanks for the presentation. It's good that you're here today, but I really would like to, to get answers to those. Thank you, thank you, uh, the Chair. Uh, just all done, uh, done yeah. Just in relation to my own contribution to it, I'm just as well like my colleagues here. I'm very, very disappointed with the plan. I think that he, he came out to villages and towns and gave them false hopes in terms of studies, spent public money in studies, and no, no response. The response is negative. And I can speak for many councillors on that regard, including Milltown, my own village. And I'm just disappointed to the end, whereby he gave people false hope with ideas of aspiration that something would be done and uh, nothing was done and I think that it's, it's disappointing uh, as Mayor Kerry. I think it's, it's, it's the whole plan I think as Councillor Fitzgerald said and many more said there's issues out there that has to be addressed and uh, for my part I just won't expand on that but just disappointed that more wasn't done. A lot of money spent and nothing to show for it. Thank you very much indeed. Can I second Tommy Mack's proposal there for, uh, for that uh, hydraulics, uh, report, uh, hydraulics report to be sent to Kim Miley Graveyard? Thank you. Yeah, just, just in, in relation to uh, Kim Miley Graveyard, I mean, I suppose, to be fair, the issues aren't uh, fluvial flooding. The issue is, 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 a, is a, ground, a groundwater issue. We gave an undertaking at the time because um, there was solutions being put forward by the local group to address the issue and we had concerns with it uh, and we were asked would we get a hydrologist uh, to, to, to do the study. We have commissioned that study and I'm still awaiting for the, the outcome of that. When the details of that study are available and whatever works or whatever is proposed out of it, we will consult with the local community at that point in time and we will advise the members. With your permission. Okay. Uh, all I want to say is, I've had, and every one of us, you know, we've had, you know, continuous emails sent to us, and it's like it's drawing out like elastic. You know, why don't somebody sit around the table and say, all right, which well, going to take A, B, or C length of time? Now, you know, in, in, in North Kerry, coming down to South Kerry, I'm sure every one of us got it. And I think, I think that, you know, that we should be a little, you know, I suppose, faster in dealing with this. It is a very serious problem, but they are saying that, that, that I suppose, that, that negotiations between, 
between the council and them, it is for a while it, 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 there was no, there was no communication at all. So all I'm saying is, you know, whatever whatever the the, 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 the problem is, please talk to them and let them know exactly what's happening. Thank you. Just a suggestion in relation to that, I suppose, just can it be dealt with under any other business because there are many councillors, especially in the North Kerry area, who spent a lot of time and effort on this. And I think if it's going to be discussed, it should be under any other, any other business, not now. Um, as we've heard, every, every one of us has a long list of issues. Um, can we avail of an opportunity to send another request to um, Minister Kenny? Um, the, who is the Minister for the OPW and his officials and invite him to a meeting here at Kelly County Council. He might pass it on maybe as well and the Secretary might write as well. Uh, I think thanks, thanks very much and thanks very much for all your comments. Um, I would I would like to, I would hate for people to go out of the room today and think that these plans, that nothing, work, no work has been done. I personally have worked on this since 2011 and it's all we do full time. Um, our sole goal is to try and find solutions for people whose properties flood. That's all we do, right? That's, that's all we do. And I've met most people in these locations and I've spoken to them and I've seen their photos. So I know how devastated they've been and I visited people after the house is flooded. So I'm well aware of the issues. And so I would like to just completely reject that, that these plans don't represent hard work because it's massive work both on the behalf of the OPW and the contribution of Kerry County Council. And not only have they identified solutions for, for 10 locations that will work and reduce risk and, and prevent those people's lives from being affected from flooding, there's also flood maps produced which will prevent risk from happening again in the future. So we don't make those bad mistakes again of putting people's residential properties in places where they don't belong. And so that's that on that issue. With regards to um, cost benefits and solutions, Glen Flesk was very tight in the cost benefit ratio and we do do all our best to try and find a solution. As I said, that's what we are trying to do and we're, we definitely, if we see something close, we, we really analyse it to try and find a way to get it in and we didn't find a solution that's cost beneficial for Glen Flesk. Um, but we are, we do have a responsibility not only to the people who flood but also to the people who fund these projects and they have to be cost beneficial. Um, with regards to maintenance of river channels, the OPW do have a responsibility under the Arterial Drainage Act to maintain our schemes and we continue to do so. Local authorities have responsibilities to maintain their drainage districts, land commission embankments, some of those were taken in charge and the ones that aren't, they're within the riparian landowner and that's the legal status of them. Um, someone raised an issue about uh, permissions and access for maintaining channels and that landowners feel a bit hamstrung and are not sure who to go to. There's an interdepartmental group that are looking at all the legal issues and that's all the government departments to see um, about uh, maintenance of river channels. So that's for river channels that have to be maintained outside of OPW powers. So they're looking at what, what permissions would be needed and, and advice for landowners on that issue. Um, with regards to Dingle, um, the optioneering PCD was the second PCD that we'd been in Dingle. So we'd already been there at mapping stage and we looked for suggestions and options at that time. I've spoken to the landowners affected at the PC optioneering stage. They came in to me at the draft of management plan stage in Castle Island, so I've spoken to them again. So, um, I mean, at optioneering stage, you went to every single community, and at mapping stage, you went to every single community. At plan stage, we're at unit of management, wider scale level, so we don't have as many public consultation events at that stage. But the plans are available in the local authority offices. There's a helpline number. If someone calls that number, they will, their details will be taken and they'll be speaking to me within two days over the phone. So and I, I can happily talk through any issue on any of those plans with an individual on a one-to-one -one basis over the phone. Um, with regards to Ken Mayer, um, no, the pipe won't solve all the problems in Ken Mayer. Uh, it, it do need uh, flood defence walls through the town. It, it, it is a significant contributory factor, but it's not, it's not going to solve all the problems by any means. Um, I think there was a couple of issues on Tralee and Ballylong for Mr. Mairead. Might be able to answer for um, In relation to the query on Banna and the defence in Banna, so the defence is located in the built up area of the village um, and it's to protect properties from flooding from the River Tyshk. I have a scheme of it and I can show you that after this if that helps. Um, were you interested in defences in Tralee as well? Or was it? Yeah. yeah. So in Tralee, where the defences are located, they're beside where the Blennerfell window 
Robin Mill is, um, at that area of the town, um, there are defences and embankments. And again, I can show you the layout of them at Yeah, yeah. So in Bally Longford, um, when we were looking at Bally Longford, we were looking to develop options which provide a standard of protection for properties, residential and non-residential. Um, and the standard of protection we were looking for is a very high standard of protection. And we found that clearing channels did not provide that standard of protection. So walls and embankments are the suggested solution for that location. Thank you, Cahir. Look, um, I, I acknowledge the, the, the work that you do, but the, the, the point that we're making here is that is there much point in identifying these problems if we're not going to be given permission to do the works to rectify it? And that, that's the, every, every, uh, every time that we get on to uh, an, an, uh, one of the, the calls to get permission, every area seems to be an SAC when it comes down to it. Thank you. And very brief, I'm very uh, disappointed in the response we're getting from the Killarney Municipal Area. Very, very disappointed. As regards the place can file it down, the, the answer you gave is that you were answerable to the, to the people spending the money, and I respect that fully. But that answer is not good enough for the people that have lived there and intend to live there in the future. And I understand that whatever cost analysis that you have, that they're very close to make it. And I would ask you to, to go back and re-look at it and include this, because out of all the places that I have mentioned out of flooding, this is by far the most frequent. And also the point about raising the road, it's hard to even understand when you stand there that if we'll raise the road, how you won't keep more water inside in the glen of the valley of, of Foyledown, as we'll call it for this purpose. I, raising the road will solve that the N22 won't be flooded and that the traffic will fly up and down past. But it needs to be explained both to me and the people there how it will solve a, a glen or a hollow, you could call it, it will have to keep more water inside it, will it or will it not? But I'd ask you to include it. It's, it's one of the most upsetting things out of the study. We understand you're trying to get places, but not to include a place that's probably one of the most frequently flooded in the county, and it is very close uh, to your cost uh, analysis. I would ask you to reconsider that. Yeah, no, mine is, I think the is going to come in and, and on the list also. Thank you. Through the Mayor, a couple of uh, miscellaneous points that, uh, that uh, I'd like to clear up. In relation to Foyle um, we do accept that there's a significant flood problem in Foyle Dune, and uh, a number of properties have been flooded internally. Uh, we wrote to the OPW seeking the inclusion of the Foyle Dune area earlier on this year, and unfortunately they weren't in a position to include it. However, Kerry County Council are currently examining one location. We've undertaken a survey, a ground investigation, and we're currently working on a design, and we hope to be in a position to lodge an application for funding to the OPW to construct that scheme which will protect a small number of properties in, in Foy Ladoon. In relation to Castle Island, uh, there is a, a minor work scheme currently underway in Castle Island, and this culvert replacement, while it won't solve the 100 year flood event, which is the aim of CFRAM, it will solve the lower order events, the 1 in 20, 1 in 40 year event. Um, we felt it was prudent here in the Executive to proceed with a, a solution, an interim solution in Tullig rather than await for a, a large-scale CFRAM scheme for Castle Island, which could, in effect, be many, many years away. Um, in relation to Cleaver, Councillor Connelly, uh, the Cleaver area was not initially included in the CFRAM study. Um, the River Field was, uh, and the lower areas uh, in Castle or in Listowel Town were. So Kerry County Council um, applied for and received funding from the OPW to, con to conduct its own study uh, in the Cleaver area, and GBA consulting engineers were appointed. Now, JBA reported back to the Council a few months ago and recommended an upstream storage option in Cleavera. Now, armed with that option, that report, uh, we wrote to the OPW to get the Cleaver area included in the CFRAM programme, and I can confirm that the OPW have come back to us and have indicated that they will include the Cleaver area in the overall CFRAM programme um, for La Stole. Um, um, one. Sorry. Yes. The, uh, the construction costs of the scheme are estimated at about half a million euros, but that includes a significant optimum bias to account for, for unknowns. Um, there's two options, really. We, we can await for the sanction of an overall flood defence scheme for Listowel, which will include the, the defensive embankments on the field and the Cleaver area, but the OPW have indicated to us that we can proceed with Cleaver independently through the minor work scheme if we so wish. And 
Um, it, it's our intention to apply for the minor work scheme, given that we have a, a very big employer in the Cleaver area. So I think that we have the OPW in the room today. I would indicate it's absolutely our intention to, to apply for the minor work scheme. Just a second, Councillor Healy, I think that, that is, it's, it's that close, I mean, and it should be done. And would I have, and I'd certainly admit that makes, if it's that close, look, in fairness, it should be looked at second to put back. And the second thing is that, that flood protection you're talking about for the small number of houses, when is that proposed that that would be going for uh, seeking um, funding for that? Is it soon? Thanks. Sorry, David. Scheme about Castle Island again. As part of those minor work schemes, is the river going to be cleared out there? Involves a new culvert at Tullig, uh, and we feel that there's adequate capacity to take the additional flows uh, in, in the Shenandoah River. Um, it's not proposed to clean out any vegetation in Castle Island at the minute, but I must clear up that the river main is an OPW watercourse. And issues regarding maintenance and removal of vegetation on the River Main are, are a matter for the OPW, not Kerry County Council. But we pass on your concerns. Just, I suppose, and I, I suppose I want to thank Connor and his team for coming down and making the presentation. But I suppose just to kind of give a, a wrap up in relation to it, I, I have a senior engineer which I'm now assigning to looking at the whole issue of the. I suppose the reports that, that the OPW have, have prepared and we'll be looking at kind of at, at, at progressing kind of some of the plans that are identified in that to make sure that we get our, uh, you know, to make, I suppose to optimise the benefit of, suppose, of the funding that's to be made available and to drive that and we'll also be looking at the issues in terms of, of coastal erosion and, that, and that'll be Gerry Reardon um, and Gerry will, 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 will be starting that on, on, on the coming week. Um, I suppose furthermore, I suppose just the issues in terms of notwithstanding what's in the Sea France program, as Damien pointed out, you know we are progressing plans for uh, works under the minor co minor uh, flood studies um, or, or minor works plans. You know where you can look for works up to half a million, and we have a number of those in train at the moment, uh, which 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 we hope to progress over the, over the coming weeks. Um, and just to keep you informed, we will keep we'll keep the MDs informed in relation to those as they're progressed. Okay. Very briefly, I, I still feel and. Uh, I, uh, I, that we require a dedicated unit in this council. We have seen the money that can that can be available. We can see that it's going to take years to rectify all this, but it's just piecemeal, a coordinated approach on an ongoing basis where routine made maintenance is done, where schemes are applied for. To my mind, the only way we're going to do it and to take this seriously if we have a dedicated unit within the county council.